it's eight in the morning and uh, this is my morning view This is why I'm traveling. I'm here, uh, this area is called uh, Silver Island Mountains, maybe you can see some above, and uh, it's uh, just two miles off the Highway 80 in uh, Barneville uh, Salt Flats. Barneville Salt Flats Speedway is about four and a half, five miles that way, a little more east, I just passed it, and that's the famous uh, uh, area where on uh, hard salt surface he raised their specially built cars and motorcycles and set the uh, world records all the time uh, there was like nine about nine miles of the surface now it's reduced to, due to overuse and the weather and uh, I think it's like only half now maybe about four miles I don't know exactly I uh, saw the movie some probably ten years ago uh, called uh, the world fastest Indian. It's about a guy from uh, played by Anthony Hopkins famous actor good guy uh, and uh, it's about um, New Zealand uh, racer who Came here to set the record and he also in New Zealand in 50s and 60s set bunch of records So he came here in 67 and set the record like 186 miles on his Indian Scout motorcycle. I think Indians are better built than Harleys. Harleys are just famous. For... That was a good movie. Check it out. The world's fastest Indian. I think next year in 68, uh, there was a famous Blue Flame specially built car that looked like a rocket. Uh, went, uh, I think, 622 miles per hour, which is over 1,000 kilometers. Those are aeroplane speeds. I even don't know how those guys uh, stop. I mean, crazy shit. But I'm still in Utah and maybe only like 10 miles to Nevada border and the next poker room. Utah has no casinos, so there was no poker. Going north also doesn't help. Wyoming and uh, Idaho also no, no casinos and poker rooms. So the only Hope is West Vendover, just like 10 miles on a Nevada border. There are casinos, there's uh, girls, and all specially built for Mormons that like to sin and go over the Nevada border. That's my next stop. So in Utah, no poker for me, but if I cannot play, I can talk poker. So I decided I'm just going to give you my uh, top five bad poker rulings by poker room management. It always amazes me how little those people know about poker and what it means to be a poker player and to 
uh, what processes we go. I think all those suits, they really didn't play much poker in their life. So they often make their decisions just out of the in air for enforcing their power. And that's what irritates me the most. It's not about the wrong ruling. It's about the fact that they exercise their power. It's going to be this way because I say so. Usually it's like that. And don't try to ask them for a, <laughs> a poker rules book. That doesn't exist. So let's start. Number five is the one that uh, bugs me a lot for years, since 2016. And I often uh, think about it, uh, especially in tournaments. It didn't happen to me, even though I have a plenty of my own. Uh, but if you remember World Series of Poker 2016, the English guy, William Kossoff and uh, Stacy Matson, or what's her name, when they got the hand and he actually got the penalty for talking too much. First, you have to know who William Kossoff is. He's a lawyer. So I assume that he studied the poker rules and that he knows as a lawyer What's the line that he can walk and be still safe? You remember Jamie Gold, he won the bracelet and the main event with talking people into calling him and folding. This is the same thing. So William Kassoff already won the World Poker Tour uh, 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 and he was known for his talking. So his talking is his weapon. He actually, as a lawyer, is uh, trained for that, to read other people, to read their reactions to his uh, talking uh, depends on the sentences that he is using, he can accomplish fold or a call, like some donkey calls and stuff like that. I tried to find a video on YouTube, but there was a hand, just two of them, Kasov and Stacy. He had, I think he had 9-6, and she had pocket queens. Why is he in a hand? Well, you tell me. But the flop was five, three, twos. So he flops the gut shot. Turn is uh, eight. So he now has double gut shot. And the river is 10. Now the stuff starts happening on the river. Kasov de decides to go all in because he cannot win the pot. That's the only way to win the pot. And he starts talking in order to get her off the hand. So he starts like, if you have pocket aces, you're not good. Word by word, it went too much because he, he doesn't stop talking. And being English guy, he has that annoying voice and accent. I personally couldn't listen to him. I couldn't listen to him. Even right now, I'm defending his uh, position. But uh, it is so annoying listening to those uh, foreigners. Well, Stacy is uh, trying to decide what to do with this all in bet. She's analyzing uh, history of hands, you know, that they were in and stuff and uh, trying to make a decision. He keeps blabbing. He goes like, OK, I'll show you if uh, uh, if you fold, I'll show you. Don't worry. Yeah, I'll show you. Finally, it went. Everybody starts complaining and somebody uh, called the, uh, I don't know, the, the tournament director came, I think Jack. What's his name? Jack uh, Affle, something like that. I don't, I don't know their names. He's a good guy. He runs that shit for years, for 10, 15 years, and he experienced all kinds of idiots at the tables. But here, I think, he really didn't apply some uh, exact rule that's written in the books, but he was just applying his power because he can kick you out of the poker room. He can give you five minute penalty, a round penalty, one hour penalty, the whole day and stuff. So that is what irritates me. Listen, I came to United States, country of freedom, from communist run country. And that is what always bothers me when somebody is imposing his power position on you as a small pawn in the game. But then Jack Effel told him, you have to stop talking. If you say another word, uh, you're going to get penalty. And, uh, and the problem is, like, he's talking about the hands. Do you have aces? Do you have this? But he, he's, 
his argument was, I'm already all in. So no matter what I say, you know, there's nothing uh, changing anything. It's, that's it. There's just two of us in a hand. Well, he was ordered not to talk. So now he starts monkeying around and like zip it. And then he kept talking with his hands. So he made some gest gestures like, uh, Meaning, like, if you mock, I show, you know, so, but without saying any word, just mimicking. And then somebody, like, look at him, he's doing it. So, tournament director comes and give him one orbit penalty. Like, I told you not to talk. Well, I didn't talk. I told you, and do you understand? Just exercising his power, beating him with a nightstick, putting me on his throat. I hate those. There's nothing in the book. Well, they have something in, uh, in especially in World Series of Poker, they had, uh, change rule based. If you remember, like this was like maybe 2007, 8, when, uh, what was his name? Something Khan, Havad Khan or something. They even call it Havad Khan rule because he was just yelling into people's face. He goes, hey, you want to get your love? Worse like, uh, what's his name? Jamie G or what was the, the, the fat, uh, Lithuanian guy or what he, what he is. Kasov got the penalty. Stacy decided to fall pocket queens. Probably based on that when he talked somebody into calling, you know, based on a history at the table. She folds, he shows nine high and says, nine high like a boss. He became famous with that like a boss. I'm telling you, if I was at the table, I would punch him in the face probably. But I still don't see that he broke any rules. But I think in this case, uh, the tournament director went too far, used his uh, nightclub too much, and I think that was wrong. Next day, or two days later, Stacy, I don't know, on Twitter, challenged him on heads up a poker match that they played somewhere, I think in Europe, and she beat him, she destroyed him. Because she's an ex excellent player, especially cash games. <laughs> Number four, dumb ruling, comes from Ho Chunk Casino in Wisconsin, place where I spent like uh, six years playing almost every every day. I'll give you two examples how bad they are. First, uh, there is tournament at uh, two o'clock Saturday. But if you come earlier and play, you play cash game and you register before one o'clock, you get extra like uh, chips, 5,000 chips. I don't remember. But it was significant amount that really increases your chip stack a lot. So I was there. I, I actually come Friday after work and I stay there. They were giving us free hotel and stuff. Saturday, I'm playing cash game, you know, from early morning and about something, uh, five minutes to one, I go to register. There's a window where you pay. There were a couple of people in front of me only, so that can be done in like two minutes. So there was enough time before one o'clock, but uh, somehow there was something, something happened and the whole registration stopped. And uh, the, the girl, actually woman that was registering us, Tina, I still remember her name, she didn't uh, manage to take us before one o'clock. So I was there, give her, she gives me just regular stack of chips. I said, how about the extra? Oh, it's past one. But I said, you're the one that, uh, you know, wasted time. I was here for 10 minutes before one. So word by word, she goes, well, you want to play or not? And so I said, well, what do you think? I'm an idiot. And then she said, uh, well, do you think I am an idiot? I said, yes, I do. And I take my money and I go back to cash game. <laughs> 10 minutes later, two big guys with ponytails, Indians, because it's Indian ca casino security. <laughs> Sir, you know, pack your chips and uh, leave. 
So they kick me out for a day. I cannot come back that day. Why? Well, you called the floor person an idiot. I said, no, I didn't. I said, she asked me, do you think I'm an idiot? And I just said, yes. I don't want to lie. So I just gave my opinion and she asked for it. Just leave and go home. So I left. That's not the end of troubles for me. Let's say a week later, two weeks later, we're in a cash game on my right immediately an idiot player who's just doing rebuys, going all in and busting out. And now he had, uh, he doesn't have any more money. He said he's going to ATM, but he already did it. So he probably has a limit on his, he cannot, uh, you know, get the uh, chips anymore. But he said he'll be back. Uh, he's going to have dinner and be back and to reserve his seat. Well, rule was if you have chips and you go for a dinner, you have one hour to return, your chips stay there at the table, but he has no chips. So now the room manager, Svetlana, the Russian girl, she told him, okay, we'll, we'll keep your seat. And she put the hand in her pocket, takes one dollar chip and puts in his seat. I said, honey, what's that? Well, to keep his seat while he's uh, at the dinner. But they say he doesn't have chips and minimum buying is 100. You cannot keep the seat with 100 because he, he busted out. He needs to put 100. For me, clear. The whole table, we, we didn't go anything nasty. But she didn't want to probably seeing that she's not right there. She, she told me, well, uh, come over here, we'll talk. I have nothing to talk with you. We continue playing the seat was waiting for the guy and he never show up actually which was my point knowing that he he's maxed out on his debit card do you believe now this two days later i receive letter in the mail i open it letterhead ho-chan casino you are banned from casino for whatever abusing the room manager what Based on her bad move, I'm banned from casino. Based on Tina being an idiot, I'm kicked out of casino. So I just left the whole state. I'm not, I'm not going to Wisconsin anymore. Number three. This is a good one. Las Vegas, Venetian. So it's one three game and I'm in a hand with only one person He's sitting opposite of me. I'm like seat seven, he's seat two, completely opposite. I have jack five, I'm in a big blind. I even don't want to be in a hand, but there was no raise. We see the flop, flop is jack five, five. I track trapping him, he checks. Turn is, I think uh, it was king. So I said, well, maybe now he has something. I track, he checks, come on. There's not going to be anything in the pot. River is another jack. So now I'm trying to get something. So I bet $11. He puts uh, three red chips. That's what I see. So he calls. I table my hand, showing jack five for a full house. The dealer goes, you mutt? I said, no, that my hand. He goes, but he raised. You didn't call the raise. I said, what? Sitting like, you know, and the light in the room or whatever, my eyeglasses, whatever is the problem, I see stacked three red chips. But basically it was five somehow, behind that another two, and I just didn't see based on the angle. I said, oh, okay, I call. Then somebody said, but he mocked. I said, how did I mock? I showed my hand. But you didn't call. Bah, 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 bah. So the dealer doesn't want to be involved. He calls the floor. Comes a fat guy with a goatee, a little bit bald. I never saw him before. That was the first and only time I actually saw him. He comes. Here's what's going on. And uh, makes a ruling. My hand is dead. Give this guy chips. 
So dealer is pushing chips and said, wait, wait, how it's dead? I didn't see that it's raised. I thought he called, I'm first to act, and I show my hand. No, you mucked. So now we start arguing. Listen, it's only $11. If it's 110, I would make, uh, you know, I would probably punch him in the face, but it's only $11, so it's not a big deal. But I said, listen, I made the bet. Show the hand because he called, didn't see. Okay, it's a raise. He still didn't show his hand, so I called. No. Then I said, what are you based? What, 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 what's the base for this ruling? You have to show me something in writing. How did you make this ruling? Because the goal of any ruling is for the best hand to win. Dealer already put, pushed the chips to the other guy, start grabbing cards, and the other guy look at me like, no, fuck it. He shows me he has ace jack. So it's a trap pot, but it's not even about that. It's about how do you make that ruling that my hand is dead? I bet he raised, okay, I didn't see. Never mind that I exposed my hands. Hand, he still didn't show his cards. So I call, but not for the pet guy. So I say, show me in the book what's in writing. He goes like, he goes like, I don't have to show you anything. You be quiet and play, or you can leave. That's again using the, the club. He probably came from the blackjack tables. He even doesn't know anything about poker. Because he's not there in, uh, on the team. I never saw him. Number two. Grattan, California, which is, I think, north of, is it Santa Rosa or something like that? And uh, I stopped there, parked on their parking lot, stayed there for a night, went to poker and to play, and grabbed a dinner, waiting for a while for a seat, got a seat. I'm in seat three. 40 minutes later, somebody bust out from the seat two, new player comes. It's some older, white hair, old, skinny, tall guy, local, because I saw from communications that they know him. And he goes like, uh, can you make a little more room and stuff. So now it depends where the seat one is, you know, his seat two, I'm in seat three, but I'm in a proper position. And I said, well, you have enough room because I'm already he almost hitting the guy in a seat four. He goes, I asked you nicely to move. So word by word, I don't want to argue. So, okay, I moved a little bit, you know. And then he, he just continues. I ask you nice and you give me attitude and stuff. I said, no, you have attitude. What do you want? Sit here like it's a kitchen table, you sit in the head of the table. So, think about this. If there's nine players at the table and dealer ten, usually dealer and seat five, seat one across each other, they say belly button to belly button. So you can section that off for two of them. On right side and left side, there's another four players. So it's easy to section those, like in half, so you have one and two and three and four. Nobody can sit in a, at the top of the table. And that is where actually this old guy ended up. So because we're arguing, dealer calls the floor guy. He said, they're going to get into fight, you know. So the floor guy told me, well, why don't you move? I said, I already moved. Well, move, you know. So he can have a room. I said, but look where he's sitting. And I start arguing. He's in the head of the table now. He should be on the other side of the half. He goes, like, move or you can leave. Again, using the club. Do you understand? What kind of rule is that? 
not even trying to to visualize to understand so i start talking splitting the table you know whatever drawing in the air for him nope you move or you leave i said i already moved i cannot move i'm going to sit in this guy's lap i i he said i had enough of you take your chips and you're out so i left here comes number one and this has the point so stick with me my number one bad ruling at the poker table happened at, uh, to me at Aqua Caliente Casino in uh, Palm Springs. Actually, it's Rancho Mirage by zip code, but Palm Springs area. We're playing a tournament and uh, I'm in a hand with only one guy. I think I was in a blind and he was the button. So I have a six of diamonds and uh, Flap was two diamonds and a six. So I bet he calls. Turn is uh, jack, possible straight. So I check, he checks. The river is, I think, deuce or I again check. He bets like 150. And the pot was already with the blinds and a bet on the flap. Pot was already about maybe seven, 800. So I'm looking at that like under 50. Well, even if he, 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 if he has a bigger pair than mine, and my hope was he got a deuce on a river, <laughs> but even if he has a bigger pair than mine, it's not much. So I said to myself, I cannot fold for 150. There's no way to fold. So I push my chips close to his, like to almost touching his chips, and I show my hand, drop it on a table. And in that moment, that's all happening like in the three seconds, you know. But important is the order. I push the chips at least, I don't know, 20 inches. So it's obvious, like over the line, obvious that I'm making a call. I show my hand and somehow based on that sentence that was in my head, I cannot fold, I actually say, I fold. But my hand was face up, so chips are in already, so I cannot fold. It was just a, you know, slip of a ton. Somehow we started again. He said he fold, but I said my chips are in, so chips, chips talk. Word by word, director, Comes uh, really not a, uh, uh, there was a guy, I think Steve was his name, that ran tournaments, but comes the, one of the dealers because he, uh, he was busy. So one of the dealer comes, uh, let's call her Jenny because I don't remember her name. So she comes, here's what's uh, going on. And she said, uh, yeah, verbal is binding, mark his hand. So again, I jump, listen, chips, we're in. And I showed the hand, so there's the fact that I said it was just slipped from my mind and no, she doesn't want to hear. So I got so mad then that, that there's now noise. So then Steve comes, he goes like, uh, yep, mark his hand, that's over. And, you know, we start arguing, yelling and uh, because I can go crazy. And I jump and I said, fuck this. I'm never going to play tournament here again. And I walk away from the table. Then Steve starts walking after me. He was like, uh, well, you still have chips. Go and finish the tournament. I said, I'm not going to play. I'm going to cash game. So I'm looking on a board. What, what cash game can I you know, join? So he, 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 he continues. Well, go and uh, I said, I don't want to. Just leave me alone. He goes, uh, if you continue behaving like that, I, I, I'm going to send you home. I said, what for? You are the one chasing me and wanting me to play. I don't want to play. So what they're going to send me home for? Ends up with that. I go in a cash game. I don't care about tournament. That was in 2013. I didn't play tournament ever again there. So 2014, next year, I moved to Las Vegas. Two years later, now it's 2016, I think January, I went to Palm Springs for a little vacation and normally, end up in a casino. We're at the table playing, you know, chatting, and uh, 
somebody gives example of some bad ruling that was some something whatever and then i say <laughs> listen to my story so i tell them this story about you know verbal is binding you know. so i finished my story and at that moment uh, 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 the new dealer came and standing waiting for this hand to be over to take the seat so when i was done with the story i hear from over here actually that dealer goes like uh, who made that ruling i turn around it's jenny i said you did she goes no way when i said three years ago that's impossible so we talked about that after that and uh, but that her question who made that ruling shows me that she realized that that was wrong and it's not about justifying me or not it's just how do you make the ruling like that chips and cards talk well i hope you take my side in these examples because usually people are so dumb and they stick with those slogans like uh, oh cards touch the muck when i hear that your cards touch the muck even their face up you, you are a complete idiot or verbal is binding or something or whatever so just makes me mad <laughs> hope you had fun with this i think in a day or two i'll be in nevada hitting the felt and reporting to you again till then adios